with both shoulders fully exposed, look from the front. And then can you turn to the side? The side. And behind the patient for obvious loss of symmetry, muscle wasting or scars. The temperature over the joint line should be assessed. And then bony landmarks, joint line, just turn around, and surrounding muscles should be palpated for tenderness. Can you pop your hands behind your head and your shoulders back? Shoulder movements and function can be assessed by asking the patient to put their hands behind their head and behind their back. Internal rotation can be given a measure by how far up the back the hands can go. In this case, to the mid thoracic level. You take your arms behind you as far as they can go. Full extension, flexion, and abduction should be assessed. Then out to the side and back down. Mark Lee reduced external rotation with the elbow flexed to 90 degrees and tucked into the patient's side is a useful diagnostic test of frozen shoulder. Okay, I'm just going to do that to you. Place your hand on top of the shoulder to isolate the glenohumeral movement. Passive movements should be performed while feeling for crepitus. Passive movement may be particularly helpful in abduction when assessing a patient with a painful arc, where pain may be experienced between 10 and 120 degrees. And can I just ask you to take your arm as high out to the side as you can? Assessment of scapular movement during full abduction should be assessed by both feeling and observing the scapula from behind the patient. Function has already been assessed by asking the patient to place their hands behind the head and behind their back.